The story we're all following this morning, the strikes by the U.S. and our allies on the Iran-backed rebels in Yemen. The reaction this morning and the concerns of expanding this war in the Middle East. Also this morning, I'll be tracking the extreme weather across the country. Tens of millions of us are waking up to everything from snow to tornado threats to heavy rain and brutal cold. That's coming up right here on Good Morning America. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA organizers for this year's MLK March say they are ready to go despite the colder weather on the way. What you need to know ahead of Monday's main event. Plus, Sarah Costa tells us how you can protect your plants from the hard freeze we're getting late this weekend. And up next, it's playoff time in Texas. We've got the matchups for both the Texans and the Cowboys. It's going to be a great weekend for football. And Trans Guide right now, we're tra tracking 35 at 37. RJ is here. We'll have an update coming up in a couple of minutes. Good morning, rise and shine at 6 a.m. It actually feels not too bad out there right now. We're in the mid 50s, but it's very windy. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It is 6 a.m. on your Friday, January 12th. Happy Friday. Enjoy this mild wind <laughs> or the wind is, you know, and the temperatures right now because it's, it's so cold this weekend. It is. Everybody's stocking up at grocery stores, which will be busy pretty much all weekend long. So expect some company at the store, Mike goes. Yes. Yeah, we had the first front move through earlier this morning and then the next really big Arctic front is going to be coming through on Sunday. And as far as today is concerned, grab a jacket. I mean, it's not bone chilling out there, uh, but and temperatures will drop a little bit this morning, but then they won't rebound all that much and then we've got some freezes in store so here's what's going on right now first of all no that's not your eyes the camera is definitely shaking out there because we have wind that is just blustery I mean to say the least temperatures at 56 degrees we were in the low 60s low to mid 60s a couple of hours ago so we're just slowly dropping down a couple of notches and we'll end up bottoming out right around 50 and obviously we're still well above normal here's the winds out of the northwest 30 miles per hour out there at the airport 21 Kerrville 32 in U Valley and then factor in the gusts 47 out there at the airport right now 45 at New Braunfels now when you have temperatures above 50. The wind chill formulas don't come into play, but obviously it feels cooler when you have that uh, that wind out there. And as far as advisories and warnings, red flag warnings going to affect at 11 o'clock up until four o'clock for the southwestern half of our area because the drier air which is in place right now is going to continue to pump on in here and with those high winds relative humidities are going to be very very low out there to the west so an, ex an increased fire danger later on this afternoon and then also wind advisories remain in effect this went into effect at midnight up until one o'clock this afternoon for all of the area for these blustery winds and then the wind will settle down later on this afternoon but that then sets us up for a really cold night mountain cedar this is yesterday's reading 73 20 Going to be interesting when the update account comes out later on this morning. And as far as the rest of today, like I said, temperatures will continue to drop down, bottom out at 50, and then slowly kind of climb back up into, well, almost where we are right now, a little bit above that. We'll be at 54 at noon and then 58, topping off with plenty of sunshine out there later on today. Now, as far as the next front that moves on through here, what we know, it comes through on Sunday. We are going to have a hard freeze. We hit freezing tomorrow, but an even harder freeze Monday and especially Tuesday and Wednesday. But Monday will also be dealing with some wind. So wind chills are going to be just ridiculously low around here Monday. Obviously, you want to prepare for pets, pipes, plants, everything else. Plus, we are going to be having, and this is there is a chance for it, uh, a little bit of wintry mix as far as some freezing rain. That's going to be late Sunday into early Monday. Not a lot of moisture, but doesn't take much, obviously with these freezing temperatures. So that's something else we're going to have to keep an eye out for Sunday into Monday. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, we do have some problems out there. RJ, what's the latest? Yeah, Mike, if you guys are getting up right now during our 6 o'clock hour, something to keep in mind, if you're headed out right now in the downtown area, we have a major crash being reported there, 35 northbound at 37 south. Uh, this looks like it happened on the left-handed lane. You can see some of our emergency vehicles out there right now. We are getting traffic that is moving through 
the right hand lane right now, but you can see we have several emergency vehicles out there right now um, uh, responding to this crash there a little bit north of downtown. And just a quick look here at our maps, you can see that uh, we do have a significant backup building here. This is going to take you all the way past uh, St. Mary's uh, to maybe even like uh, McCull, I believe that's the next street right there. So something we'll continue to monitor as we make our way. But again, downtown area right now, busy traffic of major crash being reported there. The Pine Street area, northbound 35 at 37. One other quick thing to let you know about, we've been following the stalled vehicle out there westbound at I-10 at Hebner Road. Doesn't appear, appear to be causing any major issues, so that's good news right now for anyone in that area. The rest of the city, things are actually looking okay for the most part. Again, biggest thing that we're following right now, crash 35 north at 37 south. Stephanie, Mark, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. And we'd like to mention the main lanes of 1604 at I-10, as well as the interchange on the northwest side will be completely closed this weekend due to ongoing construction. The closure includes I-10 from UTSA Boulevard to Lock and Terra Parkway and from Loop 1604 from Vance Jackson to Lock and Terra Parkway. Texas Department of Transportation said the closure is slated to start at 9 o'clock tonight and end at 5 o'clock Monday morning. TxDOT says the closure will affect the area over the next several weekends. However, it has not specified exactly when it will end. You can take a closer look at this map on our website at KSAT.com. And when temperatures this cold are in the forecast, it's important to take care of a lot of things around your house, especially your pipes. So insulating your pipes will help keep them warm and reduce the chance that they will freeze and later burst. You can use foam or fiberglass insulation sleeves. If you don't have either of those, materials from a hardware store or towels can work as a temporary option. Once it freezes below 32 degrees, the water starts to expand just like an ice tray basically and there's no room for it to escape, so it's going to stretch the pipe to the point it's going to burst. Now, keeping your faucets dripping can also help by keeping water steadily moving through the pipes. Any morning headlines, a barrage of U.S. missiles raining down on Iranian-backed militant targets in Yemen. A U.S.-led coalition launched dozens of airstrikes overnight, taking direct aim at Houthi rebels' locations. ABC's Andrew Dimmert reports the operation was in retaliation for at least 30 attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea. This morning, American fighter jets and a submarine sending a message, striking back against Iranian-backed Houthi rebels. It looks like they not only went after the sites where they launched these Iranian-supplied weapons, they went after multiple if not dozens of storage facilities. Pentagon officials say the U.S. and British military launched retaliatory strikes against more than 60 targets in Yemen using Tomahawk cruise missiles. <laughs> New video shows warplanes taking off from the USS Eisenhower, carrying out strikes on coastal radar sites, drone and missile storage, and launching locations. Earlier, the White House warned the Houthis could bear the consequences if they do not stop attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea. We're going to do what we have to do to, to, uh, to counter and defeat these threats that the Houthis keep throwing up uh, on commercial shipping uh, in the Red Sea. The response follows an attack on Tuesday when the U.S. and U.K. shot down 18 drones and three missiles from the Houthis. Since mid-November, the Pentagon says Houthi fighters have attacked 27 commercial ships in the Red Sea, where 15 percent of the world commerce passes through. The Houthis claim their strikes are in retaliation for Israel's war in Gaza and warned any U.S. attack will not go without a response from the Iranian-backed rebels. We've done everything we can to deter this. Uh, but it obviously did not work, and the choice was up to Iran. So I do think Iran will likely amp up it through its proxies. In a statement, President Biden saying he will not hesitate to direct further measures. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Blizzard warnings across Iowa forcing some Republican presidential candidates to cancel in-person events, potentially affecting voter turnout for Monday's caucus. Now, Republican candidate Nikki Haley is replacing an in-person event with a telephone town hall. Meanwhile, GOP frontrunner Donald Trump is spending another day in court, the second this week. New York State Attorney General Letitia James is arguing that Trump should also never be allowed to do business in New York again. It's a disgrace and they should pay me damages. If Trump is the candidate, you have the election will be about legal issues, criminal trials, convict, maybe he's convicted. When islands kick off the 2024 election cycle on Monday, they are likely to confront sub-zero temperatures. However, candidates are expressing optimism that their supporters will still come out. 6.08 on your Friday morning, 55 degrees. After the break, we are getting you ready for the NFL playoffs, what the Cowboys and Texans can expect during Wild Card Weekend. Plus, 
Even though our gardens are looking like it's spring, we have that hard freeze on the way. I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up on this segment with Gardening with KSAT, I'm going to take you through the best way to protect your plants from this hard freeze. Outside with live cam, if you haven't heard yet by chance, uh, we've got really cold air on the way. It's going to be around for a couple of days. We'll get the very latest thinking on that seven day forecast with Mike Osterhage. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. The nine year anniversary of the Des Bryant catch comes just days before the Dallas Cowboys host the Green Bay Packers in the NFC wild card round. Yes, yeah, Steph, what was ruled a no catch back in the 2015 NFC divisional playoff game between Dallas and Green Bay, coached by Mike McCarthy, changed the NFL definition of what a catch is. And though the rule has been really inconsistent since then, nearly a decade later, Cowboys fans want to know if this is the year the tide will turn in their favor. Dak Prescott maintains this year is different. Yeah, I don't know if I've had this this much confidence or a greater greater feel than I have with this offense, with this team, um, with our approach and, and how we're going to go and take care of things. We started off with a great week and we want to make sure that we finish it that way. And that, that's where the confidence and everything comes that you need going into this game is, is from the uh, preparation throughout the week. Two days stand in the way of Dallas and its Super Bowl quest chasing its first title since 1995. <coughs> Excuse me. So this weekend, Mike McCarthy will face his former team. The seventh seed Packers will be at the two seed Cowboys Sunday for a 3:30 kickoff. Matthew Stafford set to make his return to Detroit as the six seed Rams visit the three seed Lions Sunday at seven, and the five seed <laughs> Eagles play the four seed Tampa Bay Buccaneers Monday at seven. Right here on KSAT 12, top seed Niners have a first round bye. And over in Houston, C.J. Stroud is the only rookie quarterback to make the NFL playoffs this season. Yeah, Stroud helped return the Houston Texans to relevance far faster than expected. And tomorrow on Wild Card Weekend, the 22-year-old will continue experiencing many firsts. But the Cleveland Browns won't be fooled. They'll be, they know as well that the rest of the league, that Stroud is playing ahead of schedule. Yeah, no. <laughs> Any edge at all? Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's like an uh, edge thing where... I mean, you come in, he's a rookie quarterback, and, you know, he may struggle with this, he may struggle with that. I, I think he's, he's um, you know, mature enough to be able to, and he's seen enough football to be able to, um, uh, you know, execute in the way that he should. I, I, think, I don't think him being a rookie quarterback is going to affect uh, his play at all. CJ is one of, I mean, not just the, the best rookie quarterback, but he's the best, one of the best quarterbacks in the whole entire NFL. So um, he presents a lot of challenges for us, but um, I think we're up for the challenge. Kidding. I've got to get those shades. <laughs> Uno, this Saturday <laughs> at 3.30. So, yeah, tomorrow, 3.30 in the afternoon, Texans, Browns kick off the NFL playoffs in Houston. Looking at the other matchups, Dolphins in the sixth seed uh, are the sixth seed and will face the three-seed Chiefs Saturday at 7. It's supposed to be a wind chill of negative 30. Ow. And the two-seed Bills host the seven-seed Steelers at noon Sunday. Ravens have a first-round bye. So a full weekend of football. The only catch is that Chiefs game tomorrow night is only on Peacock, oh. nowhere else. So a lot of fans are very unhappy that it's going to be hard to watch. And a lot of fans there will be freezing as they watch. They them. will. <laughs> Yeah, it's time now, 6.15, and it's still problems there on I-35. Yeah, guys, uh, it's going to be a fun NFL weekend. Yeah, really excited to watch that Cowboys-Packers game. Uh, not fun right now on the roads, especially if you're headed in the downtown area. We're taking a look at 35 and 37 South. You can see behind me we have had a uh, crash here that's been causing a pretty good backup in the downtown area over the past uh, half hour or so. We have uh, several emergency vehicles here. We do have traffic in through on the right-handed lane there at 35 South, but again, causing a major mess out there. So there were a couple of incidents here in this area. There was a stalled vehicle, another reported crash on Pine Street. That's not really kind of causing any of this sort of major delays right now. We did just see that one crash there at 35 and 37. That is actually what's going to be backing up traffic all the way past St. Mary's to McCullough to North Main Avenue. I just took a look at some of the other trans guide shots out there and uh, yeah, it's a pretty good backup out there. So 35 southbound at 37. You're headed out downtown. Just keep this in mind if you uh, have plans to make your way around that area. All right, the biggest thing that we're going to be following throughout the entire weekend, though, is that we have this major closure there as part of the 1604 expansion project. We're looking at I-10 and 1604. That interchange is going to be completely shut down. Several of those, uh, those all those main lanes, in fact, are going to be shut down east-west I-10, 1604 east-west as well. So what we're looking at here detours. 
on I-10, you're going to be uh, exiting UTSA Boulevard, and the next exit you could get back on is going to be La Cantera Parkway. And the situation, kind of similar on uh, 1604, you're going to be exiting Vance Jackson Road and getting back on La Cantera Parkway, except on the 1604 side. So, guys, it's going to be very busy out yes. there, and uh, it's going to be cold, so maybe some people will be staying indoors watching those NFL games <laughs> instead. I hope so. I think a lot of folks will be home this weekend. Yeah, I think so, too, but it starts tonight. Starts tonight, yes. yes. Good yeah, good point. Starts tonight, 9 p.m. It's going to run through 5 a.m. Monday. Yeah, so yeah. if you're going to the Spurs game, you have to go back to Bernie. Beware. Yep, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, especially Sunday is going to yeah. be a good day to, to hunker down and watch football. But, uh, you know, you talk about the Chiefs, how cold it's going to be. That's the cold air that's coming in our direction. Then that'll be Saturday, and then we get it coming here Sunday. Sunday. But think about the games up uh, uh, in the Great Lakes area. Mm -hmm. You know, you got Cleveland, uh, Pittsburgh, Bills. Yeah, those games are also, yeah, going to be uh, some interesting conditions out there. <laughs> yeah. Indeed, so. <laughs> Go Lions. Uh, anyway, hi. Did I say that? Uh, school bus today. <laughs> grab a jacket because you'll need it throughout the day. We are going to be continuing to drop down a few degrees from where we are right now. Very windy this morning and then only 58 later on today. And just looking ahead, of course, Monday is a day off for a lot of folks because of the, the holiday. But then Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, brutally cold mornings. We're going to be down in the low 20s, teens here in town. So just something you got to keep thinking ahead into the first part of next week with this very cold air. Nice view of the skyline. This camera has been shaking over the course of the morning because we do have uh, winds that are gusting 45, close to 50 miles per hour. Tomorrow, 64. That's going to be a heat wave compared to what's coming. Uh, we'll be starting off at freezing. Sunday, only staying in the 30s. Monday, down to 25 degrees, barely getting above freezing. And then here's that... Uh, Obviously, the wind chills we deal with Monday as well, but here's Tuesday morning, Wednesday mornings. We're looking at 18 and 20, respectively, here in town. So brutally cold mornings coming up here for next week. Wind chills Monday morning are going to be forecast to be down in the single digits and low teens. So if you are planning on heading out, now this will be right when we hit our low temperature, which is going to be about this time, 7 o'clock in the morning. Obviously, the March and those activities start a little bit later on, but still we're going to have to deal with brutally cold wind chills on uh, Monday morning. Plus, we're going to be dealing with a little bit of some frozen precipitation. So this is one of these short range models. So it's now starting to go as far ahead, about three days ahead, up in towards Sunday night into Monday. And this also is indicating not much moisture out there. Obviously, with freezing temperatures, doesn't take much of anything. I mean, a spray bottle, and if it uh, freezes on contact, that can cause problems, but that's going to be the situation Sunday into Monday. Here's what we are looking at. Those temperatures that are in the uh, 40s right now up there in portions of negative 40s, I should say, in portions of Canada and the actual air temperature in Cut Bank is down to 29 degrees below zero. That's actually up a few degrees from where it was just a couple of hours ago. Single digits there even in Wichita, six in Omaha and then wind chill temperatures 14 below there in Wichita. So we are definitely going to be dealing. This is what we'll be dealing with by late Sunday, Monday morning with those just ridiculously cold temperatures around here. So here's what it looks like today. Like I said, 58 degrees later on this afternoon. So we drop down a few more degrees, come right back up and then freezing tomorrow morning. We'll double that up to 64 with sunshine. Front comes through Sunday down just below freezing, only 34 on Sunday. And we will start to see Sunday night, maybe a little bit of precipitation. So we'll have to watch out for some of the icing on some of the elevated surfaces and then those wind chills on Monday down to 25, 18 Tuesday morning, 20 on Wednesday morning. And that's just here in town. Colder temperatures in the hill country and those wind chills Monday are going to be single digits and low teens. And then finally <laughs> getting a slightly warmer toward the middle of next week. But then some long range models have another pretty good chunk of cold air by late next week, next weekend. How many days in a row would you be willing to eat grilled cheese and soup before you get tired of it? <laughs> well, if you have different soups and different cheeses, yeah. Why not? Limitless yes. options. Sure. Okay. It's appropriate for the cold weather. Yeah. And watch it with any sort of indoor or heating. If you have a space heater yeah. or something like that, keep them away from drapes, blankets. You know, just really be careful. We'll be ready. 621, 55 degrees. Just ahead, a group of Arkansas high school students caught two thieves stealing packages from a home in their neighborhood. 
That's next in your GMA First Look. Altamiris is for adults with generalized myasthenia gravis who are anti-acetylcholine receptor antibody positive. It is lasting control over your GMG symptoms. And Altamiris is the only long-acting GMG treatment with eight weeks of freedom between infusions. Altamiris can lower your immune system's ability to fight infections, increasing your chance of serious, life-threatening meningococcal and other types of infections. If not vaccinated, you must receive meningococcal vaccines at least two weeks before starting Altamiris. And if Altamiris is urgent, you should also receive two weeks of antibiotics with your vaccines. Before starting Altamiris, tell your doctor about all of your medical conditions and medications. Altamiris can cause reactions such as back pain, tiredness, dizziness, limb discomfort, or bad taste. Altamiris is here. Ask your doctor about managing your generalized myasthenia gravis with Altamiris. And this morning's GMA First Look, Chasing Down Porch Pirates. I just saw somebody on my ring camera steal two packages. In New York, the Yonkers Police Department sharing this doorbell video. Watch as the suspect brazenly stuffs a package into his backpack and swipes a second one as he leaves. And in Fort Smith, Arkansas, a group of high school seniors say they leaped into action and confronted two potential porch pirates in their neighborhood. And this morning, those package protecting teens are speaking out to GMA. We uh, opened the front door and Jordan was behind us and we all started running down the street and we checked the packages to see what the actually address was and it happened to be the person across the street. So what should you do if you see a porch pirate in action? Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll hear what law enforcement has to say along with their tips to keep your packages safe. With your GMA First Look, I'm DeMarco Morgan, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer headlines, Apple's Vision Pro headsets are expected to fly off of store shelves. The company only producing up to 80,000 virtual reality headsets in time for launch. Three weeks from today, a top analyst predicts the $3,500 headsets will sell out quickly. Google says it's getting rid of 17 of what it calls underutilized features from Google Assistant. Several of those being eliminated include the ability to use voice commands. The search engine giant claims the changes will make Google Assistant easier to use. A new WhatsApp feature now allows users to create their own stickers. You can use your own photos, personalize them with text or by overlaying other stickers and then send them to others. Once a sticker is created, it can be saved so it can be used again and again whenever you need it. Yeah. Cute. Time now, 627 and 55 degrees. Right We're now. keeping an eye on the roads for you. RJ will have an update on what's happening out there with those flashing lights at 35 and I-37. Outside with live cam. To be honest, it feels kind of like Miami, Florida out there right now compared to what is on our way. <laughs> we'll oh, talk to the overly gesturing Mike Osterhage. <laughs> Coming up here in just a second. He was only doing it to try to distract me, and it worked. <laughs> no. I didn't do a thing. Oh, he's here. You can't see him. Happy Friday, by the way. Here's Mike. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was, we have I was a lot just, to talk about. Yeah, we do have a <laughs> lot to talk about, and especially coming up on Sunday going into the first part of next week. Of course, we had the front move through here in the overnight hours, and which you have probably heard the wind blowing. And if you are hitting the roads right now, hang on with both hands. You can see this camera is actually shaking out there. That's a 410. This is the airport camera looking off to the east, and we've got temperatures right now. It's not like we had this huge blast of cold air coming in here with this front. Temperatures have been slowly dropping down. We've lost, uh, say, seven, eight degrees over the past uh, three hours or so. Now, the air is really dried out, and we've got some very, very windy conditions as well with those winds that are out of the uh, northwest, and they have been really gusting all night long and all morning long. 56 here in town, 58 there at Port SA, still 60 in Pleasanton, and then down to uh, 50 at Kerrville, 47 right now at Lost Maples. 30 mile per hour winds at the airport, same thing at Castro and 26 out there in parts of the hill country. And then we've got the gusts, 47 out there at the airport right now, 40 Castroville, 45 mile per hour wind gust in New Braunfels. So it's going to stay windy throughout the first portion of the day. We also 
as I was talking about, have this really dry air and the air is going to continue to dry out. So as it dries out with the windy conditions and temperatures go back up a little bit, the relative humidities are going to be extremely low, especially off to the west and southwest. And that's why red flag warnings go into effect at 11 o'clock this morning up until 4 o'clock this afternoon. And of course, the wind advisory remains in effect for all of the area up until 1. Going to be interesting to see what Mountain Cedar County is later on this morning. Yesterday it was 73.20, and boy, those trees are getting a good shake with that northwesterly wind. So sunny later on today. It is going to be cooler. We'll only rebound up to 58 degrees after dropping down a few more degrees this morning. Tomorrow we are going to start off very cold, down to freezing. Nice warm up though. We get up into the mid 60s. Sunday the front comes through here, much colder. We stay only in the low 30s all day long. Then. Overnight, Sunday night into early Monday, a little bit of light icing is going to be possible. Very cold, brutal wind chills on Monday morning down in the low teens and even single digits. And then frigid cold temperatures Tuesday morning as well as Wednesday morning. We'll have some sunshine in the afternoon both those days, but starting off extremely cold. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority had some problems out there so far this morning, right? Yeah, Mike, absolutely. And you mentioned those shaky cameras. Uh, just take a look at this one here. Of course, we have this accident in the background, but you can see that this camera there in the downtown area is shaking because of the winds that we're seeing in this area. So let's talk about this crash right now. Again, 35 at 37 South. Uh, we have had a crash that's been there for the better part of the past 45 minutes or so. We are seeing uh, some traffic kind of trickle through the area right here, but again, it is causing a major delay in the downtown area right now. Traffic backed up northbound 35 all the way past St. Mary's all the way to uh, North Main Avenue past McCullough as well. So something that uh, we're continuing to monitor out there. It looks like there were emergency vehicles, so hopefully they can get that cleared out. Uh, one other thing for our drivers in the downtown area. Right now, downtown just kind of a mess at the moment. I-10 westbound at Frio Street. So if you're headed out of downtown, you may run into this stalled vehicle out there. It doesn't appear to be causing any major delays, though, at the moment. The rest of the city, things are looking pretty good for the most part. I had a couple stalled vehicles on I-10 a little bit earlier, but that has been cleared out. Now, one thing that we have been continuing to follow throughout to the entire morning and just want to get the word out to you is a major closure there 1604 at I-10 Katrina Weber is live out there in the far northwest side to give us more details on this Katrina well, good, good morning. The message in as few words as possible from TxDOT for this weekend seems to be stay away. Now, this exchange area, Loop 1604 and I-10 will be closed all weekend long. Let me give you a look at the video so you can see exactly what we're talking about. This is on the northwest side of town. What that means is that the main lanes of both of these highways in this general area will be closed. This project is called the Loop 1604 North Expansion. It involves building a series of bridges. Now, some of the groundwork already has been done, but the project is really ramping up this weekend. Almost uh, halfway through uh, building the interchange. So right now the construction is really going to ramp up. We already have some columns up. So now we're putting in the foundation, um, the steel beams for the ramps and the bridges. So to do that, we have to lift the beam across the highway. As TxDOT builds those bridges, it may burn a few bridges with drivers or at least leave some pretty heated because, again, a lot of closures in this area. Uh, the closures begin at 9 o'clock tonight and go all the way all through the weekend until 5 Monday morning. So you may want to avoid this area if at all possible. We have some suggestions in the story on our website, KSAT.com, for how you can get around the construction. But keep in mind, it may not get you around the congestion. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Let's get to our other top story this morning down in Eagle Pass. The Texas Department of Public Safety has taken over a park right along the Rio Grande River. This morning, Governor Abbott is responding to the incident on X, saying, quote, as caravans of migrants are moving through Mexico toward the U.S. border, we're making it clear that Texas will be a tough place to cross, end quote. Shelby Park is about 47 acres right on the Texas-Mexico border. The mayor of Eagle Pass, Rolando Salinas, denounced the DPS told him officers would take full control of the park indefinitely to stop people from illegally crossing the border into Texas. A local leader tells KSAT some people have mixed feelings. As of today, I mean, we've had uh, both sides of the spectrum. We have people who are completely against uh, the state of Texas uh, taking over the or taking possession of, the, of this location. 
and we have people who feel that it is uh, imperative and adequate. I hope that the federal government steps up and um, reforms our laws to prevent the catastrophe that we have been dealing with. Because DPS will be at the park indefinitely, it's unclear whether events that are planned for the park for this spring will be interrupted. Looking ahead to Monday, cities across the country are celebrating the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Activities in San Antonio leading up to the annual March start today. And we already have a look at this year's poster, so take a look. This is the winning submission for 2024. It is entitled, My Today, Our Tomorrow. The artist is Alexa Villanueva, who is a student at Robert Cole High School on the Fort Sam Houston Army Post. Alexa's work was selected from among 82 entries, and her artwork will be featured throughout the march on Monday and at other events. First and foremost, we will be marching. We will have all of our other commemorative events that we do. A person of the city's MLK Commission says all systems are a go for the 37th MLK Junior March. San Antonio's march is typically one of the largest in the nation. The commission chair says our march made the cover of the Wall Street Journal last year. The city event and its record participation is a continuous reminder to those who march and watch the march of Dr. King's dream and sacrifice. Members of the commission are keeping an eye on the weather just like all of us. However, the commission is reaffirming that the commemorative events are happening. Nothing in the weather suggests that we will not be able to hold the march. It may be a little bit cold, dress appropriately, dress warm, but come to march. Our youth piece, the wreath land ceremony, all of those will take place at their designated location at the designated starting time. The MLK March starts Monday morning at 10 o'clock at the MLK Academy located on Martin Luther King Drive and will end at Pittman Sullivan Park on Iowa Street just off of New Braunfels Avenue. And that's where the annual celebration that includes food, music and information booths will happen. So for more information about the parade route, the closures, the bus services to the march, you can go to our website at ksat.com. A lot of people are bracing for the hard freeze coming our way for several days early next week. Our Sarah Costa has been getting questions on how to best protect our plants. In today's our KSAT meteorologist forecast that Arctic air will arrive early Sunday with those freezing temps sticking around through midweek. So here's how you can best protect your plants. Since our plants think it's spring, many are blooming right now, but don't prune them back. The freeze will naturally kill the blooms and leaves, which will protect the plant's roots. Cover everything outside that you can, even your winter veggies, since this will be a hard freeze. I found that covering with cardboard during the 2021 freeze saved the majority of my established perennials, especially the natives. You can also cover with frost cloth, or old sheets, or thick blankets. Stay away from plastic, it can burn your leaves. Potted plants and tropicals should be moved inside and placed near a window for light. If you move them into your garage for a couple days but fear they're going to need some light, invest in one of these UV lamps. They're not too expensive and you can get them on Amazon or at hardware stores. Cover your roses as a precaution. But if they are large and established like mine, for the most part, they should come back in the spring after they die back. These were able to survive the 2021 freeze. Don't worry about covering your sago palms. These will also come back like mine did after the 2021 freeze. Most importantly, give your plants a deep watering on Saturday before that freeze comes in. Here is the good news. Nature is resilient and you'll be surprised what actually survives and comes back in the spring. Happy gardening. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Our right, San Antonio Spurs are back in action tonight, coming off a dominating win this week in Detroit. In just 21 minutes of action, Victor Wimbenyama notched the second fastest triple double in NBA history. Wimby's playmaking skills on full display as the Silver and Black took down the league worst Pistons, 131-08. Victor continues to show what he can do in limited minutes. And while San Antonio didn't need him for a full game on Wednesday, Victor says he's ready to have his minutes restriction lifted. So we'll see what happens with Wimby uh, hosts the Charlotte Hornets tonight with the rest of the team tonight. Tip off six o'clock over at Frost Bank Center. Time now 641 and 54 degrees for now. Just ahead as the brutal cold gets closer to San Antonio, one nonprofit is stepping up to keep people warm. What Haven for Hope is doing this weekend and how you might be able to help. 
Welcome back at 645. The cold that's on its way and Haven for Hope is making sure anyone experiencing homelessness has a chance to stay warm. So this weekend they are hosting a Share the Warmth donation drive. The nonprofit is looking for coats, hats, scarves, blankets, and all other sorts of items to help someone stay warm. The organization says anyone interested at helping at that donation should sign up now. We are also seeking volunteers for this Saturday who can help us sort the donations that come in, help us greet people when they drive up and collect donations from their car. The Share the Donation Drive will happen tomorrow from 11 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon. This is a drive up event, so all you need to do is go to the location at One Haven for Hope Way and drop off your donations. You can learn more about Haven for Hope, this drive, and how to volunteer by heading to our website at KSAT. Com. Still flashing lights out there, 35 and 37. Yeah, let's check in with RJ about those problems happening right now. I'm not sure your mic's on, buddy. Guide here. There we go. All right, we're back. Yeah, I was just on the phone with Trans Guide, so having to turn the mic off. But we're looking at 35 northbound at 37 right there. You can see that we have seen this crash there for the past uh, 45 minutes to an hour or so, causing major delays there in the downtown area. I wanted to kind of show you a little bit wider view of what this is causing right now. And you can see that our crash being reported right there, 35 north at uh, 37. You can see that traffic is now backed up all the way to South Alamo. So if you have to head Anywhere north in this area might be a good idea, and you're coming from the south side, might be a good idea to take 37 and uh, take uh, the new, north New Braunfels exit to try and get around this to get back on 35. So again, a major crash being reported there, 35 northbound at 37. We still have a stalled vehicle being reported there, I-10 West at Frio. But the biggest thing that we're following throughout uh, the entire morning and really through the weekend is this major closure there being uh, that's going to take place tonight at 9 p.m. I-10 West at, uh, well, I-10 and 1604, basically that entire interchange on the northwest side. We're going to have uh, detours that are going to be in place. If you're coming on I-10, just take UTSA Boulevard to La Cantera Parkway. If you're on 1604, take Vance Jackson to La Cantera Parkway. Basically, all the main lanes in that area are going to be shut down as part of that 1604 expansion project and if you need to run errands in that area mm -hmm. expect a lot of traffic Easy. all a weekend lot of traffic. you know yes. that costco the restaurants there on the southeast corner by six a lot flags of shopping areas. the yeah. rim yeah. shopping center all of that mm -hmm. stuff will be yeah. affected very busy very busy weekend out there in northwest side just stay away if you can if you can and not just this weekend keep in mind it happens tonight so if you're out tonight yeah. make sure yeah. you get to where you need to be before that time uh, Justin just came in and he goes, this is why I was late. His garbage cans, he showed me a picture word down the street somewhere. Oh. So that's what you may be dealing with, you know, trying to fetch your um, cushions in your backyard, furniture, garbage cans, something like that, because we have been uh, seeing just, just some really, really nasty wind gusts. You can see the cameras even shaking out there. Looking off to the east, uh, some clouds, a little bit of the glow of the sunrise this morning, and we will drop down a few more degrees. When I got into work this morning, 3 o'clock, it was 60 and we're down into the mid 50s right now and then drop down again a little bit more and then rebound just to the mid to upper 50s later on today. So it's going to be a, a chilly day. Grab a jacket, keep a jacket handy. We'll top off at 58. Then the wind is going to die down. We have a lot of clear skies out there and that's going to make for a very cold evening and it's going to cool off very quickly. So by then, Tomorrow morning will be down to freezing. We get up to 64 in the afternoon. Nice looking day tomorrow. Then the Arctic front moves on through here. We drop down to 30 on Sunday morning and it's going to be tough to get out of the uh, get above freezing. I should say on Sunday going for 34 degrees. Plenty of clouds around here. We will have a little moisture moving on in and with these cold temperatures then in the overnight hours chance for a little bit of light icing 25 then but it's going to be very windy. So we'll have wind chills in the low uh, 20s and even low teens around the area. 33 on Monday and then a uh, very hard freeze Tuesday down to 18 and we're looking at even 20 on uh, Wednesday. Here's the uh, short range computer model. It starts to pick up a little bit of some icing potential in parts of the hill country. Now again, kind of a broad brush. This doesn't mean it's going to be everywhere, but the opportunity is there for a little bit of this icing Sunday night into early Monday. And again, uh, wind chills really, really cold by Monday up in the or down in the single digits up in the hill country by Monday morning. Here's what we are getting a taste of or the, the leading edge of it. 45 below there in Edmonton, Stony Rapids, 49 degrees below zero. 
That's the air temperature. So that's pushing southward, 29 below there at Cut Bank. And just a, a kind of gee whiz numbers. I mean, feels like 31 below is the wind chill there in Bismarck, even two below in Oklahoma City as of right now. So here's the forecast over the next seven days. Today, 58 in the afternoon, down to 32 tomorrow morning. We double that. Nice looking day. Front comes through early Sunday, so we'll drop down to 30. And like I said, not really make it out of the, uh, not make it above freezing in a lot of places. Then we get down to 25 Monday morning. Those cold wind chills, little bit of icing is going to be possible overnight Sunday into Monday. 18 Tuesday, 20 Wednesday morning. We will warm up, if you want to call it that, somewhat by Thursday. Stay above freezing in the morning here in town, but then it looks like another hunk of cold air comes in next weekend. Yeah, that is a warm up compared to what we will face <laughs> yeah. on Monday and Tuesday. Exactly, but just get ready for it. I mean, it's going to be cold Sunday, but even colder Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. All right, we've been warned. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Time now, 651 and 54 degrees for now. As we head to break, back outside with live cam. If you can foster pests as it's getting colder next week, please contact your nearest animal shelter. All right, welcome back. It's about to be 655 and uh, some good news here for our drivers in downtown area. We have cleared out that major crash there at 35 at 37. So we have traffic moving in both directions on both highways. Pretty good at the moment. Might be a good time to head out right now if you need to travel to downtown. Also, I uh, want to just again remind you, and I know it sounds it sound like a broken record here, but uh, just again, another reminder that this weekend, starting tonight at 9 o'clock, uh, 1604 and I-10, that interchange there on the far northwest side, will be shut down till Monday morning at 5 a.m. Of course, Monday is a holiday, so that's good news. Not going to be going to work, not going to be going to school, but this closure is now going to be uh, going through the end of this month. So every weekend through January, we're going to wow. have this closure out there, 1604 and I-10. All right, take a look outside right now, and it's gorgeous start this morning. We had the front move through earlier this morning. Temperatures have been slowly dropping down, upper 40s in the hill country, 54 at the airport, so not brutally cold. The wind, that's the big story, 23-mile-per-hour uh, winds right now, and they are gusting up to 40, just last hour gusting to 47. We have red flag warnings for the southwestern half of the area, and then wind advisories uh, up until 1 o'clock this afternoon for all of the area. So here's the story, sunny, windy, cooler, and then cold tomorrow. Front moves through Sunday, much colder, maybe a little bit of light icing Monday, brutal wind chills Monday, and even colder Tuesday and Wednesday mornings, frigid temperatures. Well, we'll be prepared, but I'm going to enjoy today and tomorrow. Yes, indeed. While we can, yes. if you might. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to join GMSA Weekends. They'll get you through this cold snap.